Do you even lift, bro? Today, we are going to be covering Fit Vine. Is it a skinny option as your wine alternative for the new year? We'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> So today, uh, as you can probably tell by the intro, I'm going to be looking at what's called Fitvine. Uh, this is a winery that is focused on trying to make more healthy wine alternatives uh, for the general consumer, for people who live active lifestyles and are actually really want to get that extra little bit out of their diet. So um, their motto is, we crush grapes, you crush life. I'm going to show you a picture of the Chardonnay. Awesome. Um and they have an interesting way of doing it. So they are fully invested into the, the healthy wine uh, kind of market. So they have zero GMOs and additives. They're gluten-free. They're vegan-friendly. And they have one-third less sulfides than most wines. Most wines have somewhere between 75 to 150 parts per million. They're at 35 parts per million. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so they probably take some shortcuts in the manufacturing process to hit that. Not really. So their wines have about the normal amount of alcohol that you would normally have. So there's secondary fermentation that happens, uh, and they supposedly taste more like a regular bottle of wine than some sort of like skinny or value wine. I'm actually going to be doing a face-off between the third bottle that Fitvine sent to me, their CAD, and have that go one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, the Skinny Girl Red. So in my next video, make sure you look at that one if you're interested to kind of see if there is there a difference between the Skinny Girl which is a kind of long established brand for being a skinny wine and fit vine, which is something I've just stumbled upon. Uh, and I am actually very excited to try these. So first I'm going to start off with the fit vine Chardonnay. All right. So I have the fit vine Chardonnay. Um, this, like I said, they do not cut really a lot of corners in the manufacturing process. Uh, it's from California. It's uh, 2015. 13.4% alcohol by volume. So it's not like 10% uh, or 10 and a half, 9, 11, somewhere around there that you find with most people who try to just make wine, make it kind of low-cal or, or cheap, and then it ends up just kind of going out that way. So they actually do secondary fermentation, so you get more of that alcohol effect to it. And like I said, they have all these other benefits like the zero GMOs and additives and so on. So now I'm actually going to try these uh, try this and see if it's any good. So I got my Govino here. And it's a little bit hard to see because my camera won't do it. There we go. So this actually has the color of a Chardonnay, which I didn't expect. So I kind of, to be honest, I expected it to be lighter. I expected it to be um, lighter in terms of the color, so more clear, less actual yellow. Um, I would say this lean... It, this is probably leaning closer a little bit to maybe like a Sauvignon Blanc if I had to say it wasn't a Chardonnay by the look, but it's, I mean, anybody who just assumes a wine is a wine by the look um, is probably either a Psalm because they are trained to butt check for it or um, is blowing smoke up their ass. So from the aroma standpoint, I'm pleasantly surprised that this smells like a Chardonnay. Uh, and does not smell like candy. This is this is nice. I'm kind of getting like a lemon and a maybe like pear lemon, but lemon is the dominant thing. Maybe a tiny bit of apple. Nah, I'm gonna say it's pear. Um, but like I would say it's like 15% pear, 85% lemon. Um, or at least that's what I'm detecting. So from uh, a taste standpoint, that's not bad. I would say it's probably borderline medium body to full body uh, Chardonnay. I'm getting a lot of, yeah, so the I'm getting a lot of lemon. I think that's kind of, of like the citrusy note I'm getting. Probably medium acid, maybe even maybe medium low acid. I mean, it's, it's not very acidic uh, for a white wine. Yeah, so I'm not really 
Oh, I think a pair is coming in the finish. This is a short finish. Um, this this is way more pleasant than I thought it was going to be. I I was I was really worried that um, it was going to be one of those things where they even though they didn't take all what it didn't look like they took a lot of the shortcuts with the wine manufacturing process. They actually still didn't result in something that tasted good. And from this perspective, this is a good Chardonnay. Like I, I actually, I would probably would have this as a solo drink. This is not bad at all. Yeah, this is, I, I'm going to rate this and enjoy again. I actually really like the Chardonnay. This is very nice. It's very crisp. It's, 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 it's clean. Um, it doesn't taste heavy. It doesn't taste like they've added like any sugar to it or, or anything like that. I just, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And the next wine that I'm going to try from Fitvine is uh, the Fitvine Pinot Noir. It's a 2015. Stay tuned. All right, so I got the Fitvine Pinot Noir 2015 from California. This one is a 13.9% alcohol by volume, and this is 95 calories per serving with 3.4 grams of carbs. Um, I forgot to bring this up in uh, the Chardonnay aspect of the video, but the Chardonnay is 90 calories per serving and three carbs per serving. Um, so it's a little bit more, um, but I guess we'll see how this and the uh, Cabernet that they sent to me compares to the Skinny Girl wine in the next video as well. So from, from this perspective, uh, I went ahead and just poured a sample. Uh, it's sort of light, but I mean, really, it kind of looks like, like your average Pinot Noir that's on the lighter side. Um, there's, they kind of go to like a light red to like a medium red. I would say this is probably more towards the lighter side from the smell standpoint. This has like a like an earthy element to it. Um, kind of musty, not in a bad way, just in a, a unique way. Um, to be honest, I'm having a hard time picking out any dominant aromas within uh, the wine. But like I said, I'm not a psalm, so I can't. If they use like Peruvian saddle leather, I don't know. I just, I'm just not that kind of person. Um. All right, so yeah, I'm not picking out anything special, but let me let me go for the taste. This is interesting. So this is interesting. So, the, in in my experience, there's kind of like three different realms of Pinot. So you have the, the like really earthy, herby ones. You have the really bright fruity ones um and then you have the kind of the middle of the ground like there's fruit and we're going to give it to you with some acid and have a nice day and it's kind of nondescript and that's where i'm at with this um like thinking about some of the ones i've tried in the past like lamerica very herbal a lot like mean like there's a predominant herbal note in that um going back to I believe it was Sawbuck, if I remember correctly. Um, that or no, actually it was Pennywise. Pennywise had a, just a ton of cinnamon. Like scent, it was like almost like it was halfway mold. Like I could have just thrown in some other herbs, warmed it on the stove, and served it, and it would have saved me some some time in, in buying the cinnamon aspect of it. So, so that was that was an interesting wine. This was more of a middle ground. So this is more of the. Uh, it's like a medium medium high acid. Um, it's going to give you. Um, a, a lot of fruit up front, the acid's gonna hit, and it's gonna kind of mellow off in the finish, probably a short finish. Mm, yeah, short to medium finish. Um, this one's not bad either. Um, I would say this is a try again, uh, just mostly because um, I tend to it's just more of a personal preference on my end. I tend to favor the Pinot Noirs that are a little bit more herbal, that are a little bit more um, kind of just like earthy. Uh, this one has some earthy elements to it, but I think it's I think it's like cherry or, or maybe maybe like a dark cherry, like a black cherry or 
uh, something like that. But that, that that's the dominant note in this, and that's fine. I mean, it's I'm I'm not knocking the wine for, for that at all. But it just kind of tends to be more that middle of the road, and I kind of tend to get personally like more of those earthy herbal wines, and not necessarily the fruit bright wines. But for people who do, this would probably be an enjoy again for you. So uh, don't just take my word for it. This is. Well, I'm, you kind of are taking my word for it. That's where I got my YouTube channel. Anyway, so you're, try it from your end and see if you like it because you may have a different inclination towards uh, Pinot's than I do. And you might actually just think this is the best thing since sliced bread. And I'm sitting here going, well, it's good, but it's not necessarily the best one I've had. Um, but on that note, I would still probably buy it again, especially if I'm going to a health conscious option because I can't find any other skinny brands that have a Pinot. So um, that would be, that's definitely one of the things that's a, a big sell on my part is that it's a Pinot and I can't find one anywhere else. Okay, so in summary, I'm gonna do a quick, re like just review of what uh, we, I covered. So we did Fitvine Chardonnay and I did the Fitvine Pinot Noir. Um, in the end, they're both pretty good, especially for being skinny wines. Um, they didn't disappoint in terms of flavor they didn't disappoint in terms of actually having a body to them. Uh, they didn't just taste like they were just made quickly, thrown in a bottle, and, and sent off. They actually felt like someone cared and gave a damn about the winemaking process on these wines. So that's a great start. Um, now, here is uh, the, a bit of the catch. The wines don't necessarily fall into the wine on the dime kind of video or just in general review cost profile. The Chardonnay is uh, $15.99 on the website. And the Pinot is a limited edition run right now. It's a $19.99 um, purchase on the website. Dollar, $19.99, dollars, you know. So I had to be honest about that. They sent these to me for me to review. I really appreciate um, them sending it my way, but it falls outside of my price category. Sorry. However, I have been working with Fitvine uh, since I received these in. Letting them know, hey, I am a little bit concerned that these aren't within the, the $15 price point I have. So uh, Market Fit Vine has graciously offered a discount code for Wine on the Dime readers. So if you are a reader of the blog, you're at the YouTube channel, go to the website for this entry. I'll put the link in the video description below. And from there, you can actually get the discount code you need in order to get 10% off your standard bottle. So it will bring any of the standard bottles like the Cab, uh, the Chardonnay, those will now be under $15 per bottle, so you can purchase them and try them yourself. Unfortunately, the Pinot was still probably going to be around $17 once that happened. Maybe we'll get lucky in the long run. Uh, the Pinot won't become a limited edition run. It'll become a standard offering. It'll be priced at the current level of the other wines and make them competitive. That would be good. Ultimately, I'll be honest, I would kind of love to see these um, get uh, maybe paired around the same as the Skinny Girl wine. They're a few dollars cheaper, and then that would just make it an instant, easy we're going to throw these in there, but I can't control that. I don't own the manufacturing process. I'm not CEO of the company, um, but I would love to see these um, at maybe like a $14 price point instead of a $16 price point. Just that few extra dollars opens up, in my opinion, um, a whole new world of people who are looking to get value out of wine. $2 for some may not be a big deal, but I started wine on the dime when I was trying to go through school and I didn't have a lot of money to do wine and I wanted to get into it. So $2 for me was the difference of, can I grab a quick small meal between classes and still be able to enjoy a glass of wine later that night? So in the end, I think both of these wines are um, a, a, a great purchase. So if you are someone who's looking to be uh, doing, <laughs> I'm give me these right. If you're someone who is looking for a healthier alternative to your standard wine, um, Fitvine is definitely an option that you wanna look into. Um, they have a really good uh, flavor, and I really feel like these are something that you would enjoy um, again and again. So go out and pick them up. And this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime, signing off. I hope you liked the video today, and if you'd like to see more reviews from Wine on the Dime, make sure you click subscribe and click the bell next to it so you get notifications when I post a new video. Also, don't forget to go to the blog so you can see some of the written items I have on there. I just don't do videos from time to time I write. And also, make sure you share it with your friends. Spread the knowledge, get everybody out there so we can all try to find these wines together and make sure these good things. If you have a certain wine that you'd like to see in the future, leave a comment below.
Thanks. This has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime signing off. Have a great day.